Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, Father, the Prince of Peace, we are gathered in your presence this evening waiting to hear from you. Lord, you have brought these people to your presence and you desire them to hear your word. I pray, dear Lord, that you will speak to each one of them individually and personally. I am just a vessel in your hands, Jehovah God. I pray that you will use me. Remove every word that is of mine and give me your word, dear Lord. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate the praise and worship. Thank you, praise and worship. You are usually a blessing in our lives. And we pray that the Lord will increase you in every way. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Ai iyo amen hata haitoshi. Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity that the Lord has granted unto me to share his word with you. My name is Ida. Many of you know me as teacher Ida and I like it that way. And I thank God for this opportunity in the Lord's presence to be used by him to be the one to bring his word today. I also want, in a special way, to thank our provost. Because ideally, this pulpit is his. But every time, he has given us an opportunity to share God's word. And we pray that the Lord will increase our provost, even as we serve with him here, and even as he leads us, that the Lord will increase him in, in every way. Amen. Last week, Reverend Moses started a journey with us. And he was talking about passing on the faith. And he read to us one of the readings that I will just read again. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Where Paul writes and to Timothy and says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived with your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that now lives in you also. And he was teaching us about passing on this faith to our children and the uh, and our grandchildren, so that generations after us will know the same God that we know today. Today, I want us to read another verse that was uh, given to us, Deuteronomy. Just open your Bibles, if you have your Bible with you, Deuteronomy chapter, five, chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 1 to verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 1 to verse 9. This is what the Bible says. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directs me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, so that you, your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I have given you so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land 
flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you, I give you today, are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. I want you to underline that. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and buy them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames. The, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, I am reminded many times when I, I think of a race or passing on the baton of faith. That is our topic today. Passing on the baton of faith. I am reminded of an Olympic game. How many of us watch the Olympics? I am a fan of the Olympics. Because I remember in my early years in primary, I used to run. And many of my primary schoolmates remember, remember me because of the 1500 meters. So I like the Olympic Games. And an Olympic game uh, has runners. And these runners carry torches and transport them, transport the flame from the Olympia to the destination of the site of the game. Just before the Olympic begins, there is usually a, a torch that goes round. Amen? Do you know the torch? Yes. And those are given the honor of carrying this torch from one destination to the other are often referred to as guardians of the flame. Now, their responsibility is to ensure that the flame remains lit throughout as it passes from one runner to the next, that it doesn't go off until the fire reaches the destination. Whether you realize or not, you are a guardian of flame of faith. Amen? You are a guardian of flame of faith. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you are a guardian of the flame of faith. And you are called to run a race and to keep the faith ablaze and pass on the baton of faith from your generation to the next generation, which is your children, and to the next generation, which is your grandchildren. And your goal is that the children who come after you will continue keeping the faith ablaze. That is our, that is our, our, our goal. Now, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Many will think of that verse of the financial blessings. And many times we refer to it when we quote, when we, when we quote that, that scripture, we usually relate it to financial blessings that we leave behind for our biological children and grandchildren. But it can also apply to the spiritual legacy that we leave to the younger members of the body of Christ. Not necessarily our children alone, but for the whole family of God, because that is what God calls us for. So what are we leaving for our children? What are we leaving for our grandchildren? 
the heritage of faith that we live from one generation to the other, we expect that they will pick it and use it. It is faith that we are living as Christians, as people who know the Lord Jesus Christ. We are expected to pass on the baton of faith. And as we leave this baton of faith to our children and our grandchildren, we expect that they too will pass it on to their generation and the next and the next to eternity. We need to be absolutely sure what, that when we graduate to heaven, that they are counting on that quest. They are holding on firmly to that faith that we gave it to them. We need to leave a legacy that is unwavering. A legacy that is unwavering, a legacy that is uncompromised, a legacy of faith. Can you turn to your neighbor, tell them you need to leave a legacy that is uncompromised and a legacy that is unwavering. Now, to pass on the baton of faith, you must first possess it. Now, you can't pass on what you, don't, what you do not have. Sindio, you just pass on what you have. You must possess faith. And for a smooth handover, you need to have a firm grip of that baton of faith. Now, I tell you, I, I am a fan of Olympics. And especially the part that I love most, I don't know whether you do, is the relay. Four by four, four by one. And I look at how those runners hold that button. Because immediately it drops. You cannot continue the journey. Do you realize that? That you have to come back for it. And in most cases, you're disqualified. Because the button fell. So there is an aspect of holding firm, having a firm grip of the button. And this grip, you have to intentionally, with all effort, place it rightly in the hand of the next runner. Now, if you, if you realize how they pass on the button, you realize how intentional they are to place the button in your hands and to make sure you have held it firmly. Now, in our case, we need to have a firm grip of the button of faith. And intentionally, that's why the Bible says, impress it. Impress. What does it mean to impress? Or what is impressed? A seal is impressed. And I can see how a seal is impressed maybe on your title deed. It takes effort. It takes a lot of effort. And being intentional so that the seal does not go out of where you expected it to be. As Christians, we need to be intentional in our effort to press on the button of faith rightly in the next generation. Then how do we do this? Number one, we make faith our legacy. Make faith your legacy. Psalm 145 and verse 4 says this, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty works. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty works. When you build your faith and strengthen your relationship with the Lord, you will enjoy the endless personal benefits that come with it. But did you know that your effort to develop this spiritual strength greatly impacts the young people? Christians are watching you. 
these people, the next generation, are keenly watching how you make faith your legacy. You need to be inspired. They need to see faith in action. Faith achieving and faith overcoming. Amen? Now, faith, the Bible says faith without action is dead. You cannot say that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you do contrary. You have to put it into action. The real Bible faith needs to be put at work. Paul reminds us that what you have seen me do, do it so that the next generation will be able to see it and also do it. And we are reminded of a generation in Judges that did not know God. So they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because these people who were tasked with the mandate to pass on the baton did not put their action, their faith in action. What exactly are this young generation seeing? Everything. How you speak, how you think, how you act, how you do your things. They are watching absolutely everything. So as you tell them to dress modestly, and you yourself you're not, they're emulating. I'm told, as a teacher I know, that the 10% of what we say, 10%, children only get 10% of what we say. 50% on what they, we say and see. What, we, what they hear and what they see is only 50%. But 90% of what they hear, they say and do. So as we fashion our lives according to faith, then we need to know that they are looking at everything. Are our words matching our actions? Faith is how you live. Your lifestyle is a message and a button waiting to be passed to the next generation. Can I say that again? Faith is how you live. Faith is a lifestyle, a message, and a button waiting to be passed to the next generation. Not just to your children and grandchildren, but to every young person in your generation and every young person in this church. How the leaders of this church will carry out themselves will enable the next generation to be passionate about God in this church. They are watching. They are studying us. What legacy are we passing to them? So as we look at producing fruit in every good work, making faith a legacy is one of those fruits that in many, many years to come, this generation will know that there were a people who really took time and made this place a good place where God will dwell. A lot of people hand down hatred have you not seen in generations that my father and my great-grandfather harbored hatred over a certain family, over his brother, and it was passed on to us, and we are told, be careful, even as you relate with them, even as you relate with your cousins, only hatred is passed. Many of us will pass on hatred. Tumekuwazana na wewe, unaenda kuingiza watoto. And you're telling them, I don't like how it was done. Instead of us coming to reason together and sorting it out, you pass it on to the next generation. That is exactly what you will harbor and what you will reap. Because you will not sow hautapanda uh, maindi na uvune maharagwe, sindio? 
si ndio Christians ukipanda mahindi utavuna nini mahindi so whatever you plant on your children on the people of this church that is exactly what you will reap Deuteronomy chapter 11 just echoes what we have read and says this commit yourself wholeheartedly to these words of mine tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders teach them to your children talk to them when you are at home when you are getting up write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that means that as people of faith guardians of the flame we constantly need to talk about faith to our children to the next generation we speak words about god we should never let young people hear and believe come out of our mouth the word of god says in some in proverbs 22 in verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go and when he grows he will never depart from it so our training means constantly working and walking with them constantly being an example to them constantly fashioning our lives the way we would want them to fashion their life to pass on the baton of faith to the next generation model faith show them how to use the authority that god has given them do not shy about it let them see it in action faith is fun to watch in action so what are you modeling to your children gloria copland says this we need to know how to use the authority that god has given us so that the next generation can see firsthand the power of God working in their lives. So who is the first hand? You. God has given you a responsibility to pass on the baton. Make a decision today to make faith your legacy. I have seen people leave so much wealth to their children. But that wealth just goes destroyed. Some of them kill each other because of that wealth. Look at those families that have modeled faith, have left faith as a legacy. You can count yourself. I see it in my grandmother. I saw it in my mother. And I pray that God will help me to pass on this legacy of faith to my children and my children will pass it to the next generation. Let us declare Psalm 145, verse 5, and that says, I will speak of the glorious honor of your majesty and your wonderful works. Let us speak of the glorious things of God. Even if you do not have anything to speak about, if you have not experienced any miracle, then tell them of the miracle that God performed in the word of God. Because out of that, they will model faith. Amen? Get faith into the hands of the next generation so that you can take it to the world. Amen? Now, whose responsibility is it? When you're talking about we, we, whose responsibility is it to pass on this button? And I'm reminded of a song that is singing. Okay, I love singing. And those who knew me, in the beginning, knew me as a, as a singer in the choir. One song that was sung by uh, Arusha Mjini, they sang like this. Baba, awe askofu, mama, awe mchungaji, watoto wawe wainjilisti, watoto wawe wai. It means, therefore, that all of us have a responsibility. We cannot point fingers and say it is the father's responsibility. 
It is the mother's responsibility because she spends more time with the children. It is all our collective responsibility. So what is the responsibility of the father? The Bible says, Paul says to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15, he says this, In Christ Jesus, I became your father. Now, a father in this song says that a father is the bishop. Yeah, and you are scoffu, Cindy. Now, who is a scoffu kaziake ninini? Unfortunately, I'm a teacher, so I need answers. Uh -huh. Oversight. So, as a father, your work is oversight. The body of Christ is a family. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. But families also need fathers to carry on the flame of faith and pass on the baton. Even those who do not have God-fearing natural fathers, there are spiritual fathers. Amen? Sikuna wababa katika hii nyumba. Are there fathers in this congregation? Yes. You have a duty and a responsibility to pass on the baton of faith to young men and young ladies in this church. If you are a Christian man, ask yourself, am I willing to become a spiritual father to anyone? Even if you do not have children of your own, God has placed so many children in your lineage, be it your brother's children, your sister's children. All those are your responsibility because you are a God-fearing man. The world is willing to offer all kinds of model. The world is willing to offer all forms of professional athletes. But we need to follow in the example of Christ. Whether the young men express it, whether they say it, the young men will never say they need a model. But young men of this congregation, men of all ages, men of value, men of insight, men of wisdom, men of counsel, the young Christian men are willing to be guided by you. They need spiritual fathers. What is the work of the spiritual father? A spiritual father nourishes, a spiritual father protects, a spiritual father upholds. He models the right thinking, he models the right speaking, he models the right living. He encourages the younger men to build up their faith, to love their wives for those who are in the youth, and to avoid sin. He is a pillar of strength in the world. And in this world, where everything and anything can be modeled, you too need to be modeled as a Christian father and as a spiritual father. Every man in the body of Christ is called to be a spiritual father. Every man. You have something that you can pass on to the young people. No matter your age, whether or not you have children, if you have, if you are a Christian man, people out there, total strangers, will look up for you for help. Why? Because men of God live on a higher plane. Can you give a God a heart, heart clap for that? Say, men of God live on a higher plane. Men of God live on a higher plane. Because you are an overseer, you cannot be on the same level with us. You live on a higher plane. And that's why you are set apart. And the Bible calls you the overseers. You are not perfect. Don't look for perfection. But you are being perfected in the image of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen?
Wanaume mko? Yes. You're not perfect, but God is perfecting you through his name. Amen? The church is a family, and we need all ages. Every generation needs the desire and the guidance of those who have gone before them. Don't hesitate to take your place as, your, as a spiritual father. The body of Christ needs you. Paul writes to the believers in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter, 1, chapter 10, verse 31, all through to 11 and verse 1. And he says, Therefore, whether you eat, therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all things to the glory of God. Do not offend the Jews or the Greeks or the church of God. Just as I also, just as I also please everyone in all things, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of the many, so that they may be saved. And in verse, chapter 13 and verse 1 says, be imitators of me, just as I am an imitator of Christ. Can you confidently say, men of this house, that follow me as I follow Christ? That is how we pass on the baton. That is how we are able to pass on the baton of faith. As the children, as the young people see you model Christ, they can follow after you. And you following Christ. And as they continue, as, you, as we leave this generation and go away, they will continue following Christ as their children follow after them. And their children following after them. And God will be pleased with this world. Amen? So much about the men. Amen? Now, the, the third thing is, that God wants and God uh, understands that all, not only men are in this world. He also placed women in this world. And the work of the woman was to, to be a helper to the man. Amen? So you are maintaining a practice laid down by the fathers. You are not building your own and you need to accept that we, the Bible says that we are a weaker sex. And if God says that the men are the overseers, then it definitely just means that we need to take the mantle from them. We are following, maintaining what they have put in place. Passing on the baton of faith to the next generation requires a special role of the spiritual mothers. Today's society sends confusing messages to our young women. We tell them what they ought to be, how they ought to be, yet we ourselves do not fashion it. But most of it, most of what we say or how we say it does not match the word of God. That's why natural mothers need to have a place in passing on the baton of faith. If you're a Christian mother, whether you know it or not, you're being watched. You're being watched. You're being studied by the young people. You need to be an example of the woman in the Proverbs 31. Whether or not you have children, no matter your age, younger, younger women need your guidance, need your encouragement. Women in their 20s can teach those who are younger. Women in their 40s can teach those who are in their 20s and 30s and so on. As the body of Christ, we need to honor those who have experience over us. We need to embrace them. We need to respect them. What they have to say, we need to put it into word. A woman who lives a godly life and follows the word of God is called a spiritual mother. 
As, what is the duties of a spiritual mother? A spiritual mother defends. Wakati baba amekuwa amekuwa mkali sana na amepanish you should not use harsh words. You should bring back in love. A spiritual mother cherishes. A spiritual mother directs. A spiritual mother corrects. She, a, she is an example of a godly woman. But spiritual mothers aren't just needed for the women. Young men also need them. Amen? Young men also need them. They need their encouragement. They need their support. Their need, they need their direction. And they need their correction. They hunger for spiritual mothers. And those women who serve in special purposes as their spirit, in their spiritual growth. One thing that surprises me about Paul as an apostle is that he too had a spiritual mother. In Romans chapter 16 and verse 13, he says, he mentions this special woman who was in his life, and he says this, Great Rufus, that special servant of the Lord, and greet his mother, who has been like a mother to me. So he saw the work that Rufus' mother was doing. And he says, he declares that Rufus was a special servant of the Lord. And he sends greetings to him. And he also sends greetings to the mother of Rufus, who was also like a mother to him. Take your place. For us to pass on the baton, we need to take our place. We need to take up our place as mothers, as fathers. It is our responsibility. It is our mandate that God gave us. We need to help the younger generation to rise up in faith and follow the Lord. Embrace the anointing that you have received as a spiritual father and a spiritual mother, as a spiritual brother, as a spiritual sister, because you are not left, left out. Your spiritual children are out there, out there waiting for you. They are waiting for your direction. They are waiting for your guidance. They are waiting for your love. What legacy of faith are you leaving to the next generation? How are you passing on this battle? How are you producing fruit in every good work? Children are the evangelists, like we have sung, waiting to spread the message that we have given to them, waiting to get the message and to spread the message that we have modeled to them. What are we modeling? What are we passing on? In conclusion, you can be that flame of faith. You can be that flame of faith. Regardless of whether you can stand here like me, whether you have a fluency of speech, whether you cannot be able to speak, there is something you can be able to do in the house of the Lord. When you purpose to make faith your legacy, and embrace your calling as a spiritual mother, as a spiritual father, then God will give you the grace. Amen? God will give you the grace. You cannot make it by yourself. But we need God. That is how you pass on the baton of faith to the next generation. Your legacy of faith begins now. Your legacy of faith begins today. Your legacy of faith begins in your family. Your legacy of faith begins right now. As I conclude, I want us to take these prayer points. Number one, we are going to ask God to help us make faith our legacy. 
as we stand before the Lord, we are going to tell God, indeed God has given us so many opportunities, but we have sat on them and we have said it is meant for other people. God is reminding us today that we need to make faith our legacy. Number two, we are going to ask God to help me be a role model to all my spiritual sons and daughters. When I talk about spiritual sons, it also includes those ones that God has given me in my house. That God will help us to be a good role model so that we can confidently say, like Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Number three, we are going to give to ask God to give us the grace to follow him diligently. And number four, we are going to ask God to help our children be part of this faith that we profess. That our children will not be left behind. That our children will be part of this faith that we profess. They are going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And they are going to pass on the baton to the next generation. Let us be upstanding. Praise and worship. First, let us, let us just take our time. Just tell God, God, I am sorry for the times that I have thought that this responsibility lies with other people. I have not looked at myself as a person who needs to pass on this legacy, but have usually pointed fingers to other people and said it is their responsibility. Just let us, just tell God, God, I am sorry for the times that I have neglected my responsibility as a mother, as a father, that I have not done what you have told me to. You asked me to impress this knowledge on my children as I sit. Kwa hivyo, sina, sina excuse ya kusema siku pata nafasi. But God says we need to impress it in the life of our children as we sit, as we walk along with them, as we lie down, as we wake up. We need to impress it in the doorsteps of our doors and in our gates. What are we putting on the table? What are we putting on our doorsteps? What are we putting in the lives? What, is, what are the children seeing? How are we modeling our lives? Let us just tell God we are sorry. Just open your mouth as a Christian. Let us just open our mouths before the Lord. And ask God, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry because I have not done as you have asked me to. Many times, Jehovah God, I have thought that by saying it, I will follow. But I have realized, dear Lord, that I need to put faith in action. That this faith needs to be modeled in my life. That they need to see Christ in me. That they need to see me flash on the life of Christ. So that they can be able to follow. Lord, I am sorry. For God, I am sorry. For the responsibility that you have given me with this children. Lord, I pray that you have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me.
Jehovah God that I have used the opportunity that you have given me as a parent to speak ill of the people that you have put in higher places oh God and my children have harbored the hatred in their hearts oh Lord I pray that you will cleanse me Jehovah God have mercy upon me Jehovah God because these children are my responsibility and I will be answerable for every action that they take. How have they have fashioned their lives because of my actions, Lord? I pray, Jehovah Master, that you will forgive us. Father, create in them a clean heart today that they will know, O oh Lord, that it is you who has a place in their hearts. Remove every hatred in their hearts, Jehovah Master. Put in a new clean heart in their hearts. Let them start a new journey with you, Jehovah Master. Lord, help me to be a good role model. To the Christian sons and daughters that you have placed in my hands. Be it my own that I gave back to all the ones that you have given me a mandate to watch over. Lord, I pray, Jehovah Master, that you will help us. As people, oh God, who ask for these blessings, Jehovah God, you have said that the children are a reward from, uh, from you. And we need to embrace them, Jehovah God. Where we have modeled contrary to your word, Jehovah Master, we ask for your pardon. Help us to be good role models. Give us the grace to follow you diligently, dear Lord. Give us the grace to follow you diligently with our words, with our actions, with our hearts, everything that belongs to us. Help us, O oh Lord, to be bold like Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Help us, dear Lord, to be diligent in our walk with you. That we will be confident to say that indeed we have done our part as God had required us. Help us, dear Lord, that our children will be part of this faith that we profess. That they will never be left away. They will never not be left out. They will be partakers of this blessing all to the glory and honor of your name. As we profess Christ in our families, as we profess Christ in our homes, as we profess Christ in our, in our, uh, in our generations, Jehovah God, we pray that our generations will not be lost. But Jehovah God, they will uphold you as their Lord and, our, and their Savior. That their generations will not do evil in your sight, but they will walk in the faithfulness of your word. So we thank you, dear Lord, for teaching us how to pass on the baton of faith. Help us to be good guardians of the flame of faith. All this we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Let us just give a hearty clap to the Lord.